Schedule. Um, you have two meetings today, sir. The product director wants to see our new launch product, and Hoover says he has something to report to you. Oh, tell Hoover I have no time. But but he says it's really important. Something about a new company, sir. The one called Pepsi. Um, he says you should probably keep an eye on it before it's too. Pepsi. Who cares, Emma? It's not the first time that people want to come in this market. I've told you, there's no way they could be us. We have the secret recipe, aka super duper high barriers of entry. Tell Hoover to calm down and drink some cola. Uh, understood, sir. Then, um, in the afternoon, the New York Times wanted to set up an interview with you. Pepsi has become the choice of a new generation. Be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. Excuse me, sir. Hey, Jackie, what's up? I would like to ask you about the Pepsi challenge you mentioned last meeting. What would be the format of the Pepsi challenge? At Moss, set up a table with two cups, one containing Pepsi and one with Coca-Cola. Record the results to see which cup people like better. By the way, remember to contact the TV station, live broadcast to test prices. I'd love to see if people would choose Coca-Cola without knowing the brand. Mm, that's a great idea, but what if you lose? I know you have concerns. It is very risky, but to break the monopoly of Coca-Cola, Pepsi Challenge is the most effective strategy now. I believe a product. I bet most people would choose Pepsi. Whoa, dude, the thing is sick. It tastes so good. No, right? I don't know what this brand is, but it tastes way better than Coca-Cola. This is the latest product of Pepsi Cola. Cheaper, cooler, and better than Coca-Cola. Coca whatever the. I'm gonna get some of this new stuff. People are gonna love this on my party. Ah, Emma. Great. Let's get a New York Times interview going. Me and my cola can't wait. <laughs> Get a joke, because if you wait too long before you drink it, this bubble will evaporate and the whole thing just tastes like water with sugar. <laughs> uh, good one. Um, so about the interview, uh, actually, it's cancelled, sir. What do you mean cancelled? Well, the New York Times wants to interview the CEO of Pepsi Cola instead of us, since they sold more products than us last season. That's impossible. We are the only firm in this market. We dominate it. Not anymore, sir. We now have an oligopoly, an imperfect market structure where the market is dominated by a few large firms. You know, like the oil industry, the cereal industry, the automobile industry, something like that. With its ultra tasty flavor and fantastic bubbles that make the drink taste like sparkling water, Pepsi Cola gradually wins everyone's heart. Soon, less people tend to buy Coca-Cola, and the latter realize that it has to do something to save the day. I won't let Pepsi get away with this. I mean, Pepsi. Who drinks Pepsi? It tastes like ah、uh, sparkling water. So plain. Well, sir, there are two types of oligopolies that can exist. The first one is colluding oligopolies, otherwise known as cartels. The second one is non-colluding oligopolies that practice what refers to as price leadership. Well, if we can make a deal with Pepsi, maybe we can raise our profit. Hmm. I see. 
We want the first type. Arrange a meeting. I will meet with this C of Pepsi and see whether we can collude. As Pepsi successfully grabs people's heart and got itself into the market, Coca-Cola and Pepsi become oligopolistic firms that collude to dominate the soft drink market. This is when we come to the most important part of oligopoly: game theory. Game theory is the study of how people behave in strategic situations. In this scenario, both firms have the choice of adding or not adding more sugar to their products, and the potential profits of both firms are listed in the matrix. The firms are aware of the payoffs but do not collude when making their decision, and the numbers on the upper right corner of each box belong to Coca-Cola, and the number on the bottom left corner of each box belong to Pepsi. Assuming that both companies are able to see this table, for Coca-Cola, if Pepsi adds more sugar, Coca-Cola is going to add more sugar because 1,000 is bigger than 900, and if Pepsi doesn't add more sugar, Coca-Cola is also going to add more sugar because 2,500 is bigger than 2,000. And now, Coca-Cola has a dominant strategy. Dominant strategy is the best option of one firm. Regardless of other firms' choices, for Coca-Cola, adding more sugar is its dominant strategy because no matter what Pepsi does, adding more sugar is always better than not adding. And likewise, for Pepsi, the dominant strategy is adding more sugar too. In the end, the outcome is that both companies will choose to add more sugar to their products. Thus, they will both earn one thousand dollars. In this case, there is a Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is the outcome when each firm chooses its best strategy, given the strategies that all the other have chosen.